Hello to my Geminis. This is Queen Amo Ra coming to you with your general reading, Geminis. Let's get into it. Let's see what's in your cards as we close out this cycle. This reading is for the 30th of um, August through the 6th of September, okay? So Mercury is no longer retrograde. If you're watching this, even on the 29th, right? So Mercury is no longer retrograde. The messages you needed to get about how you communicate, how other people communicate. Some of you all have, may have taken classes during Mercury retrograde, signed new contracts, travel, whatever you did during your ruling planet mercury's retrograde but whatever for certain your messages have come through loud and clear about how you love and how other people love right you're an air science we're talking about the heart chakra right how you love and how other people love you learned your love language and some of y'all went through your cell phones and looked to see how you may have been an over giver in the past but that has changed as you were closing out the cycle we are in a waning crescent moon phase a waning crescent moon phase is a time for self-care, self-kindness, and self-forgiveness, right? And just kind of sort of winding down, getting your rest, you know, as you're closing out this cycle, prepare in mental preparation, physical and mental preparation for this new moon that we are coming up on. We have a new moon in Virgo on the 2nd of September. Let's go. All right, so somebody is planting some new seeds. You know, you're waking up from some nightmares yourself, some downloads, some past memories, um, a possible loved ones, family members. Here we have the Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, Two of Swords, King of Swords, Page of Swords, and Two of Wands, right? But you could also be picking up on other people's nightmares as well. So here we have the Seven of Pentacles here. Here we have the Nine of Swords here. You could be picking on up, up on loved ones' nightmares. Here we have the Two of Swords here. Here we have the King of Swords here. You see these butterflies up here? So you have you have clarity of thought. Like so, if a loved one is going through, if some seeds are being planted about you from loved ones, from their loved ones or whatever, um, and we're talking about the page of swords, some kind of anxiety is going to go away very soon. Here we have the two of wands here. As you continue to move forward and leave some energies behind, or they may be leaving some energies behind. Whoever it is, they could be leaving two energies behind. But nevertheless, I feel like. Because you're waking up from some nightmares, you could be picking up on loved ones who are also waking up from some nightmares. It could be a younger person. We talk about page energy is youthful energy, right? So you may have been feeling like you've been walking a tightrope. You got all these ideas floating around in your head, all these downloads, waking up from nightmares from the past. See this moon right here? You waking up from nightmares from the past, right? And so um, probably past exes, ex-friends, ex-family members you no longer consider as family. You may say them, they're, you're related to them, but you don't, as an adult, you're saying they're no longer family because of some things that they may have done to hurt you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But nevertheless, somebody is on their throne. This is King of Wands. You're feeling very youthful. You have a lot of youthful ideas that you're ready to plant some seeds and implement those ideas. So I feel like somebody could be learning some new things. You all love to learn right remember we had a um um we started out with earth energy so a um, loved one could be an earth sign capricorn taurus or um or uh virgo could be a loved one here um but yeah so i feel like some new seeds are being planted um in your spirit here's the king of swords yeah yeah so somebody has full working knowledge and clarity about how when seeds are being planted possibly from both sides of the family see these two swords right here how seeds are planted remember pentacles is um it's a, pentacles is about physical existence of things so seeds some generational seeds can be planted like and just how people love right and so um some things have motivated you some things no longer motivate you your motivations may have changed that's what fire is something can motivate you um but some things in terms of like people not wanting to speak your love language that's no longer motivating for you anymore that adds no clarity there's no growth there in other words so find out what your love language is because i feel like that's what you'll be doing to close out this cycle while you're getting some rest and really see if people have been speaking your love language especially people that you've communicated this is my love language you know, and if if we're going to remain connected going into the next cycle, then it's time for you to start at least speaking my love language. Like I've been speaking your, what's your love language, right? And just like really putting forth adult, mature, 
um, connections there, right? Somebody's going to find that some of those relationships may fall off because some people are really not willing to speak your love language. You've been such an overgiver. Somebody has been, somebody has a really big heart. Somehow people are equate people who have a big heart, who love deep and love hard is not being smart. But this is a result of you being hurt so much. I feel like somebody feels like if I'm a good person, people will be good to me. But this double king of swords here lets me know there was two energies involved. No matter how good you were to them, they left you in a state of confusion because of their either narcissism, feelings of low self-worth, something, you know, they kept you in a state of confusion. It could have been your mom and dad. It could have been grandparents. It could have been aunts, uncles, or whoever. But the new you moving into this new phase, and we have a new moon in Virgo, which is a very meticulous zodiac sign. It's like you're trying to perfect your own love language so that moving forward, you don't get hurt like you've been hurt in the past. And if that means that that loses some people, you're okay with it. That's where your mute, being a mutable sign actually works to your advantage. That's where it actually works to your advantage because you're okay with it. Somebody doesn't want to live another nightmare, you know, of just, you know, it's just hitting you on all sides. So you made a decision. This is a lover's card. You made a decision to love up on yourselves more, Right. So you've been like struck by your own Cupid's bow, like that Cupid's arrow, this little cute little Cupid right here. You said, you know what? I'm focusing on loving myself. So you want somebody who's going to give just as much as you give in a relationship that would be open to learning your love language, just like you've been open to learning other people's love language. So, so that's a decision that you've made. Lover's card connects us with um, um, uh, partnerships in business and or in love. But it also connects us with decisions, right? So you've made a decision that you've been an overgiver. Too much talking, too much overthinking, too much overgiving. Heart, big, gigantic heart. And, you know, it could be that people just want to argue with you or people just want material possessions from you. And so that's stopped. That's why that's how you made it to your king of swords. That's how you made it to your throne. You're like, mm -mm. that's a seven. Seven means something is complete. Here's a death card, right? So, yeah, you've decided to stop that. You've decided to put an end to that because it's very toxic when you're an overgiver. And it just actually almost creates a monster of just um, attracting takers because all it takes, think about it this way. Sword energy is very painful. Like you see blood. If somebody hits you with a sword, you'll see blood, right? If you're around people who just want to trauma bond with you, but they have an agenda, they want to get familiar. This is fire energy, familiar spirits. They want to get familiar with all the pain you've gone through. It, but they know you're smart. They know that your money is growing and all they want from you is money. Do you think they're going to come to you with a, a, a um, and, they, and you're thinking motive? Like what would be the motive that people wouldn't help you? And they know that you have a bleeding heart. You've gone through this and that. All it takes for you to see sometimes is somebody to roll their eyes up in the air like, here we go again. They just, woe is me. They're not even trying to help you. They're not even trying to reach down and help you up. That's where the nine and two comes in. Nine and two is your awakening. That's 11, right? So however you get to the number 11, whenever you see the number 11, it's a call up. It's like source saying, I'm calling your attention to something. I need you. I'm trying to enlighten you. Get off the fence. Stop overthinking something. And I need you to step into the light. So sometimes people will hear, it's like, okay, you only come around when you want something from me. Like, like for instance, physical existence. You only come around when you want sex. Or you only come around when you want some material possessions. Or you only call me, you know, when you need a shoulder to cry on. But when I need you for something, I, it's nothing I can get. Somebody, in other words, somebody is tied to lopsided relationships. From family, friends, whomever. Somebody's just tired of lopsided relationships of all forms. You're just tired of it. So, yeah, so that's where we have the, like I said, seven of pentacles here. Once you end something, that's going to clear a room for a lot of people because that's when you're going to start saying, oh, they don't really love you the way you thought they did. They only love what you can do for them, right? So, yeah, um, so here we have the two of pentacles here. So, some kind of a... Um, some kind of a new connection is happening here. Some kind of new seeds are being planted and a new connection is happening here. And so something could be centered around money for you and somebody, right? Now that something has ended, I mean, not, it was centered around money, but centered around music. That's what I meant to say. That's what we got reggaeton and uh, salsa here. So something having to do with music could create, can bond somebody. So that could mean you're going to meet somebody, you know, that's, that's, uh, um, or like I said, 
somebody had, could have also come into some kind of clarity about two people as well. And they could be saying, hey, they moving on from those energies too. So the anxiety could be going away. And so you and somebody could be creating a bond, something connecting you as far as music is concerned. So something, everybody is going through a rebirth. That's the main thing. Everybody is going through a rebirth. Everybody's waking up from nightmares and all of that. So here we have the Princess of Swords. So I feel like somebody's life is going to be like a, like a, in terms of just like, um, um, in terms, like an easier life, like in terms of like communication, like love language. I feel like it's going to be a lot easier moving forward because that's what, this is what's setting you apart. You have been speaking other people's love language for so long, you neglected yourself. And that's really rare, Gemini, that you just... It's like that when you talk about something like that comes along once in a blue moon. Like you have been such an overgiver of your heart to people. Now you're going to start expecting, no, no, no. I don't want to be caught in that karmic cycle anymore. I don't want to be caught in that karmic cycle anymore. Especially if you're trying to salvage relationships. You're like, mm -mm, I don't want to be caught in that karmic cycle anymore. And just being in a state of confusion. So a strategy is coming together. Here's the seven of... Swords and people will think that you and possibly somebody are, you know, not telling people they may think that y'all being sneaky, or it could be you and a family member that has just decided, hey, listen, we got a bunch of takers in the family. It could be you and a sibling that said, we got, or you and your spouse, or you and whoever. It's like we got a bunch of uh, uh, takers in the family. All they do is just take, take, take. As soon as your money start growing, they want to just come around when they can get something from people. So let's make a new pact. See this infinity symbol right here? Like y'all are entering into a new, you know, a new um, situation, right? Somebody may have decided that, hey, oh, when it comes to, you know, jumping on the bandwagon, when people like somebody could have a music career or somebody, something having to do with entertainment, as soon as people feel like some money is growing for somebody, then everybody coming around and thinking that, you know, they want to be attached to something. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like... It would be like family members feeling like when it comes to, you know, them saying, oh, I'm, I'll come and support your music. You know, when they feel like something is really starting to take off, you know, then they want to come around. And so, so it's like, no, some new seeds are being planted, like as far as you're concerned. And some people don't think that you and somebody are being very sneaky or like y'all are being deceitful in some kind of way. But like I said before, that's not the case at all. Here we have the Emperor card. Yeah, so there could be a, an Aries that could be thinking somebody is being deceitful, deceitful or holding on to some kind of secrets when really they having a tower moment. That's what it is. This, these two right here, um, um, Aries and Scorpio, um, are both ruled by Mars, which is the tower card, right? So some kind of decision has been made. You and somebody are going to be coming to draw some kind of conclusion you know, coming together in terms of like financial independence, you'll be teaching somebody how to do some something that's going to be caused help them to be financially independent. Here we have Queen of Cups here, so um, and it's going to be very compassionate, like very very compassionate between you and somebody. Here we have the Ten of Wands here, and it's going to keep people booked and busy and not burdened at all. Now you're not you won't be carrying other people's burdens and their bitterness you know, at all. So it's going, it's keeping you booked and busy. You and somebody going to be booked and busy and not having time to carry other people's burdens and their bitterness, right? Again, here we have the six of cups. I feel like you're um, moving forward in childlike faith and I see soulmate energy as a result of it, right? So you and somebody have decided to move on from past disappointments, toss, you know, your head and heart are no longer at war with each other. Y'all are moving forward in childlike faith. So again, it could be you and a sibling. That's saying, hey, the rest of the family, they're just a bunch of takers. <laughs> you know, and that happens when you're an overgiver in a family of takers. It, it just happens. Sometimes before you even know it, you feel like you don't, first, you're always the one that's making the phone calls. You're the one that's always making a text message. You're, for, you're the one that's always putting forth the effort, and nobody's asking you if you need anything. It happens. You you forgave everybody and moved on. Here we have Queen of Wands here. So, yeah, adjust your crown. I see you as down to earth, relatable. You know, people are drawn to your warmth. When I look in your card, I see you charismatic. People are drawn to your warmth. They want to be around you, right? They Something about you is just fun, right? And so you're a giver. You know, a lot of Geminis are hilarious. Like, y'all are very funny, down to earth. You know, and so... Somebody will definitely, people are definitely going to have a tower moment. People are definitely going to have a tower because they won't be able to figure out for the life of them, like, 
you know, what's going on. Like I said, you and somebody's head and heart are no longer at war with each other. This is the Eight of Cups. It's not long, no longer at war with each other. It just takes an enormous amount of compassion. Because once y'all start talking and gain some clarity through conversation about how both of y'all have experienced a bunch of nightmares from people from the past, and y'all just on that plane of just like it, talking about traumas, but y'all not saying y'all staying at a trauma bond. It's like now at that point, let's create some kind of a strategy. Let's create some kind of a strategy that works best for you and somebody, right? So that's what's going to bind you and somebody together. And you're going to feel very fortunate. Yep, the wheel of fortune. That's what's going to cause somebody to feel very, very fortunate. Like in just in terms of just like the air that you all have. Like the the air is very powerful. So if you've been listening to air sounds, you know, at night as an air sign, that could be clearing the air for you. So there's going to be a lot of clearing of the air, you know, kind of conversation with you and somebody. So... Here we have the hangman and a lot of things will be emptied out. Like a lot of things, a lot of hurt is going to be emptied out, aired out. A lot of stuff is going to be emptied out. So that's the power of communication. That's the power of communication. A lot of things are going to be aired out. A lot of things are going to be aired out. So here we have the king of swords here. I want to say king of swords came out three times. Yeah, so king of swords came out three times, right? So, you know, it's just like I said, lots of... Um, mature conversations lots of mature conversation here we have the king of pentacles and so what's happening here is that you have such a wealth of knowledge about um a lot of wisdom about a lot of things both in your personal and your professional life that people don't know you necessarily about you so i feel like you have learning some things about them they're gonna learn some things about you and coming together it's gonna make both of you all king of swords like that wisdom like okay now in adult relationship now we know what we know about each other and that's what's that's the sacred part that's the sacred bond that you have we have a wealth of knowledge about each other and so just protecting that energy here we have the four of cups and anybody that feels left out is gonna make it all about them but that's what i'm saying here with the seven of swords people think people holding on to secrets and stuff very painful secrets about this that and so on and so forth like i said for your concern here we have your building legacy you have a wealth of knowledge that you can share with people and you're building legacy and that's all that matters but you're building a legacy on love and not on, on or just a bunch of trauma bonding and pain so that's where you are so that's what's setting somebody apart that's why you see the king of pentacles there and also the ten of pentacles you and somebody are going to be planting some brand new seeds about the painful past y'all went through and just starting something new, you know. And uh, But again, y'all not staying on that trauma bond level. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. Make sure I, I, got, I think I got everything with the cards. Um, yeah, because people have just been putting all kinds of dark magic in people's ear about you. You know, saying all this stuff that they assume and all this stuff, not realizing they were adding to your, um, and these are two people from your past. Again, they could be two types, let me say two types of people who like to gossip and cause all kinds of anxiety, having everybody walking on eggshells and like they walking a tightrope around them because they just always just, just gossipy. Here we have the king, yeah, master manipulators, king of swords, I mean king of cups. But see, here's the thing though. Um... Some people have fallen on their own sword when it comes to you, Gemini. They have talked themselves into falling on their own sword. They came across as obsessed with you, right? That's why your work now is won't even have to be hard. Whenever you're trying to clear up, it won't even be hard because it came something came across as an obsession with you, like an emotional obsession that people just cannot. Like I said, somebody just wanted to empty people out of you. Like it was just an, accept, an obsession, talking negatively about you, putting all kinds of dark magic on people. And so sources saying you're gonna feel very fortunate because when you come in and you clear up clear the air with some things and say, Hey, listen, do you want to be connected to dark magic or do you want things to be cleared up? Do you want to have a mature conversation? Just you and somebody. That's what the two pentacles. You and somebody, like I said, it could be you and a sibling, you and some family member coming together, whether they blood relative or you know, married into or whoever could be you and a spouse. Obviously, that's not blood relative. Well, I hope it's not blood relative, but y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all are talking about building a whole new legacy. You know, aside from any master manipulation. In other words, in other words, what people think they know about you. Try to manipulate the narrative. And things are going to come together real fast. 
Here we have the um, the um, the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah. So both of y'all are gonna be booked and busy, and neither one of y'all are gonna be carrying other people's burdens because nothing flows like that when the air isn't clear. So yeah, when the air is not clear, nothing flows. So that's where the breakthrough is gonna come in with you and somebody. That's where the breakthrough comes in because somebody has been giving somebody nervous breakdowns when it comes to you, but you're like, mm mm. Let's go ahead and create a very firm boundary and let's enforce the boundary, right? So that's the world card. So yeah, it's really about boundaries, about you respecting other people's boundaries and them respecting your boundaries. That's what it's going to boil down to. Boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Boundaries being respected. So here we have pour into yourselves more as you versus you. So yeah, somebody's been seeing you as competition and just like, creating a bunch of narratives, just negative stuff. But it's time to release the burden. Don't return their call. Don't forget that rest is a form of self-care. Somebody has a python spirit, which is a lying spirit. So it's almost like but your, your laughter is medicine, right? But what I say, somebody's ex was on assignment. That's what It could be ex-family member, ex-friend, ex-whomever, but wealth is within your reach. So yeah, you and somebody are creating a very firm boundary, but somebody has not been completely honest with you. And it could be that energy that's in the middle that's been on the receiving and of having a nervous breakdown when it comes to you. So it's time to dance around your home as if no one is watching, but listen to your inner voice, you know, and the angel of prophecy and wisdom is with you, but somebody's an incubus. Um, and so put yourselves first. So when people are host for their demons and they want, they're too arrogant to recognize that that could be a problem. Those are the energies that you want to stay away from because everybody has temptations, right? That would be like a person, let's, let's not even use a sex demon. Listen to use, you know, a person who is, um, who have been told, um, let me say, let's say, let's say sugar is a demon. We know you're one of your temptations. Cause when I say demons, I'm talking about temptations. Let's say sugar is your temptation, right? And so does that make cake the devil? Does it make candy the devil, cookies the devil? No. But once you recognize that's a temptation for you, you stay as far away from it as possible. And sometimes they can look like people. Like you stay as far away from energies that cannot control their sexual urges. You just got to gotta cut them off. You got to get as far away from them as possible no matter what. So if that can even be like... Um, that's why I, I, I tell people on my readings, I'm like, don't always accuse your spouse of cheating on you with somebody because if they are even in proximity with sex demons, they will make them feel like something's wrong with them. They'll say, oh, what, you don't cheat on your wife or your husband? Like, pss, you know, they ain't going nowhere. Next thing you know, they planted a seed that is just grown. It's just being watered because now that's peer pressure. So they may not have slept with anybody. They may not have cheated. But if they keep hanging out with certain energies and keep being under that dark spell, they'll think it's okay. Next, who's, who's going to be sitting at home crying, mad, upset, ready to, you know, kick somebody out of the house or argue or whatever. The sex demon, they didn't gone on because that's just how, that's just how they roll. That's just the, that's the energy they on. So I feel like you're going to be dancing around the house as if no one is watching because somebody's ex was on some kind of an assignment. The more and more they can talk negative or dark about you, the more and more they can get more people on their team. But see, when you're operating in love and agape love, that that always squashes the devil. You already know how the stories end in the end. Somebody wants to be connected to you because you don't want to be connected to them. They're trying to influence everybody around around them that's connected to you to cut you off. So get some fresh air. Yeah. So get some fresh air. Yeah. Anybody they feel like is connected to you that where your head and heart would be at war about cutting people off. They're trying to get people to, it's like for them, it's like I said, it's a competition. It's, it's a straight up competition. Anybody they feel like they can lure away from you where they feel like your head and heart would be at war with each other. That's why source is saying you got to be willing to say, you know what, when you're dealing with all adults, Hey, you're respecting everybody's boundaries. This is not some kitty contest of who is the smartest, who's the this, who's the that. It's not a contest. So, yep, channeling. Yep, so 
Yeah, you're definitely coming off of that channel of those competitive spirits. You have a good heart. You love deep and you love hard. But somebody who sees you as competition, in-laws, exes, because it could be the ex and the, and, and the other family that could see you as a, because um, there's a young person involved, a younger person involved. It could be the in-laws or the ex, because if we see exes on some kind of an assignment there, <clears throat> maybe ex-friend. You know, family members you don't talk to anymore. It could be a whole lot of energies that see, that just kind of just, you know, will listen to anybody who will, you know, who will get to anybody who will listen to try to change their mind about you. So here's change. When the ego finally sees the utter madness of trying to control everything, you come to a sacred crossroad in your own evolution. And that's exactly what somebody's ex is going to come to. When they stop trying to change everything, trying to ego is out of control, edging God out. You you just like okay, they gonna come to they gonna come to their own evolution. So here we have wisdom. I'm a lifelong learner. I listen more than I speak. I listen to understand, not to reply. Divine wisdom flows freely into my life. I make wise decisions. I am prudent. I am patient. I am prudent and I am patient. Right. I am prudent and I am patient. I'm prudent and I am patient. I'm prudent and I am patient. Here we have 27. I am expressive. So your mind is wide open and you are tolerant and compassionate towards all ways of life. You value freedom of expression and you want to improve the conditions of people, whether in your community, country, or world at large. So that would be like you're, you're open to hearing other people's, you know, their point of view. Just like I said, in a very mature, respectful way, um, you know, uh, respecting other people's boundaries, but you're also enforcing yours as well enforcing your boundaries as well but somebody gonna emotionally feel like they hit the jackpot you're gonna feel very very fortunate because you could be telling somebody a gazillion times let's say you have a loved one and you could tell you could tell people hey that side of the family or that group can't stand me they did they, they work and talking negatively about me for you people don't hear it until you say let me pull out the sword so they can they can sit there and listen to how obsessed some things sound so i am worthy of the very best a very best in life and lovingly allow myself to accept what comes my way yeah so yeah so like i said before i feel like somebody is open to conversation wherever you are you know i feel like i, I don't know what i'm talking i feel like i'm talking to two sisters or about two brothers somebody where y'all are like basically making a decision that y'all have gone through enough pain back talking me back talking about you behind your back for as family members are concerned and somebody's just like no we need to build our own bond we need to build our own bond. We're tired of people trying to manipulate our minds when it comes to talking about loved ones. Just sick and tired of it. So, yeah, somebody's hating harder no longer at war with each other. You know, um, here we have 13. I am confident you are a conscientious worker with a knack for coming up with creative ideas and turning them into something real. An optimistic but practical outlook keeps you determined and on track as, your work, as you work steadily towards your goals. Yep, 13. One and three is four. Right, one and three is four. That is what I have for you. That is what I have for you. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you all in the next reading. There's a lot of things you can do during the um, waning crescent moon phase, and what you can focus on is a lot of information online. Take advantage of it. That's what I have for you, and I'll see you in the next reading. Okay, bye.